Clarifications, please. Ms. Aniso. Thank you, Chairman. This clarification is in relation to YCCY, which MOS Elvin Tan has shared with us earlier on the internship opportunities for youth in the social and community sectors in Singapore. I wish to inquire whether we can consider extending it to overseas opportunities in these aspects as well. One example is actually a youth exchange program organised previously by the central CDC under its High Five Youth Initiative many years ago, which I personally benefited as a student leader. So the awardees actually participate in an exchange program in countries such as Australia and China Xiamen to better understand its local community good practice on matters such as intergenerational bonding and put them in good practice when we turn back to Singapore. Thank the member for her clarification. Um, the Youth Core Community Internship Program uh, is one of many different programs and it's starting in Q2 this year. Uh, but I wanted to uh, let the member know that we have other programs and one of the most uh, appropriate ones is called the Youth Expedition Project, uh, which is run by Youth Core Singapore for youth uh, to in fact do what exactly the member mentioned, to serve other communities overseas. Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID, we sent about uh, four to 5,000 youths every year for a two-week community service stint with overseas youth organizations. And the YEC pro YEP program uh, usually spends about four to six months if you, you factor in prep, planning, as well as post-trip reflections. Uh, we intend to restart this YEP. Now it's, we have it online, so it's called YEP Go, Go Online. Not as ideal as we would love to because nothing beats being there physically, um, but we plan to restart it very soon. The, well, hopefully when travel resumes. Uh, the other program is AEP, the Asia uh, Exposure Ready Program, uh, which will expand support to travel-based programs when it's possible um, to, for a more ex experiential and more uh, community-based experience for youth overseas. So we have these programs in place and we hope to restart these uh, programs when travel resumes. Thank you. It's Mark Che. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, I just want to make two clarifications. One is to ask the Minister about the establishment of a gaming digital uh, content and technology hub. And the second is on the Para Sport Academy. Um, how many athletes will it impact? At what level will it impact? And what are the tangible um, goals uh, to understand what the success of this Para Sport Academy will look like? Thank you. I thank the member, Mr. Che, for his questions. To deal with his first point first, Mr. Che might be pleased to know that we've been working with partners such as the Global Sports Innovation Centre, as GSIC. Uh, and just a few months back in December last year, GSIC launched the Asia Pacific HQ in Singapore. And having partners like GSIC in Singapore means that we will aggregate the thought leadership in Singapore. And as you know, with uh, gaming, with technology and innovation, there is a natural synergy, a confluence of various aspects of this gaming industry, gaming and fitness industry. And we'll have a place in Singapore where we'll have content and game developers coalesce. We'll have the hardware developers as well. And of course, those who are involved in technology, including things like wearables, which are gaining prevalence in the way in which we do fitness. So all of that will be in Singapore, and uh, we intend to work with them to develop this ecosystem and strengthen Singapore's position for sport tech solutions. In relation to the Para Sport Academies, we intend to work with uh, several sports first as a start. 
In the first instance, we would probably use uh, existing framework and infrastructure and work with the Disability Sports Council to see how we can move the para-athletes into the system in this way. I think that's the fastest way to scale up. Over time, I appreciate that each sport may be different and the way in which we train, nurture, develop a para-athlete may be different sport to sport and may also be different between the para-athlete and the able-bodied athlete. But as we develop the base and infrastructure, we will begin to scale up with the expertise so that more of them can enter the system in this way. As to Mr. Che's point about what is the potential and the pathways, well, we intend to put them on the same platform as the able-bodied athletes. If the able-bodied athletes have a certain pathway opportunity, we intend to make sure that we put the para-athletes on the same track, on the same path, so that there is equality in terms of, if not in terms of outcomes, certainly in terms of where the starting point should be. Thank you, sir. Mr. Darrow David. And I just have one clarification. It's very heartening to hear the plan shared by um, Minister of State Lo and uh, Minister Evan Tong about how they intend to support, invigorate and promote the arts uh, industry in Singapore. Minister uh, Edwin talked about um, having safe spaces for the arts, for expression and development. He talked about 45 Armenian Street. I'd just like to ask, Minister, if you could perhaps uh, expound a bit more on whether there will be more such spaces that will be uh, provided for our arts uh, community and also what some of the resources and facilities that could be perhaps um, put in place in these uh, spaces. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. When it comes to art spaces, our objective is really threefold. One, given Singapore's land scarcity, we want to ensure optimal usage and efficiency in usage. Second, we want to ensure that there's fair access because we have new, more, new and younger groups coming through and we want to ensure that the space has sufficient turnover so that they can also occupy the spaces and the opportunities for these new growing groups to incubate and to experiment. And finally, we want these spaces to continue to remain relevant. In some cases, we update the spaces so that old spaces can be used for new purposes. Over time, I think we have had uh, the opportunity to grow the spaces available. If you just take, just by real estate purposes, over the last 10 years, we've grown it by about 35% in terms of absolute real estate space dedicated to arts users. And we continually look at how we can refresh the existing spaces. I'll just give you some examples, some of which my colleagues have touched on earlier. We have the Tanjong District Park, TPD, Tanjong Parga District Park. Uh, we all know that it used to be a place where container cranes and so on you know, occupy those spaces. But actually, if you think about it, it's an unlikely space, but if you think about it, it's actually quite intuitive to use it as an art space. High ceilings, large walls, you can have displays there that you can't otherwise do in our current settings or spaces. So we are using this as an experiment to develop this into a new hub for art spaces. The members spoke about 45 Armenian Street as well. 45 Armenian Street is a place with lots of history. Many of our arts practitioners know and know the place as a young experimental place with buzz where you come in, you incubate, you spend some time Learning, learning from each other as well. And so we wanted to develop this with the same kind of feeling and ethos. And it is in that respect that we invited practitioners, leaders of the arts community today, May Anderson, Janice is another, I mentioned some names earlier, to come and share their experience with us and think in terms of how to envision this space for future use. Kampong Java, another space that we looked at. Kampong Java, you all of you probably drive past it each day and not realize that it is there. It used to be old terrace houses, it is now disused. So we worked with SLA, take advantage of the fact that it's not been used, and see how we could repurpose it. It used to be terrace property, so a little bit grungy, a little bit rundown, but quite perfect and ideal for art spaces. So we reimagined the space, 
thought about how these can become independent, affordable spaces for, again, experimental and incubatory arts companies. And we are working with uh, the arts industry also to get ideas as to how this can be managed, can be operated. So these are some examples of the thinking in terms of how we can expand on existing spaces, old spaces, to bring them into new ones, and also ultimately use the spaces fairly and efficiently, and ensuring that as, as and when we have new companies, new ideas, new forms of art come through, they will also have their space in the sun and be able to develop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sito, would you like to withdraw your amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank Minister Edwin Tong, his entire MCCY team, as well as all MPs who have spoken. With that, sir, I beg leave to withdraw my amendment. Thank you. Is the Honourable Member given leave to withdraw the amendment? I think leave of the majority is given. The amendment is withdrawn. The question is that a sum of $2,034,131,400 for hit X stand part of the main estimates. As many as of the opinions say aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. The question is that the sum of $4,319,100 for hit X stand part of the development estimates. As many as of the opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it.